Hi, so this is a quick video just to show you a new tool that Microsoft's released around the Azure Automation space. So Azure Automation, for those that haven't seen it, is a cloud process and workflow automation service based in Azure. Now this could be used to automate things within Azure, so it can hook into um, tasks when VMs created, SQL databases, or SQL Server, uh, web services, and you can use it for automating the various tasks and processes that you need. We also now have the wonderful feature around hybrid worker groups. So hybrid worker groups actually allow us to author and create the run books and host them in the cloud, but then actually execute them on premise. So these run books, they can be either PowerShell workflow, PowerShell scripts, or graphical workflows. And if we have a quick look at one of the PowerShell workflow scripts, we can see that we have a text-based editor. Now it has basic things within here, so we get some level of um, autocomplete or IntelliSense, um, but it's still being in the cloud, we have a single pane, and it doesn't have some of the features that you might be used to with a PowerShell ISE locally. So what Microsoft did recently is they released an actual addition to the PowerShell ISE where we can start to offer these run books on premise. So if you have a look at the PowerShell gallery, and this is a new, it's currently under limited preview as you can see at the top, site where people will upload both Microsoft and the community modules, either PowerShell modules or desired state configurations that we can either deploy directly into Azure Automation or we can download and use locally. So since this one is designed, and this is the Azure Automation Offering Toolkit that we're talking about, designed to be run locally because it extends as an add-on to the PowerShell ISE environment, let's have a look at the main project site, and we can see that there's some various information. So the main features of this is all around being able to test your PowerShell workflow uh, flow scripts locally, being able to sync them from the cloud between the on-premise, so as we're working on them, we can upload them and download them, be able to see the easy tracking of local changes made, as well as being able to actually use some of the automation assets that you'd normally create in the cloud and some of the different uh, variables and automation activities. Now this is also a perfect time to show you an example of using some of the features of wi um, Windows PowerShell 5 that comes with um, Windows 10 and will be soon uh, in the Windows Management Framework which is currently in the production preview for other versions of the operating systems. Now that feature is the ability to actually pull down a module from the PowerShell gallery and be able to install it directly without having to download and manually unzip it. So if we spin up a new console, you can see here we have the first command and that's the install module which tells it to use the psget or the nuget to go and get it from the gallery and then we give it the name that we want to go search for which in this case is the Azure Automation Offering Toolkit. So that should kick off that request, it'll go scan the gallery. I should then get a prompt to say, do I want to actually allow this? So let's just say yes for this. And then we can see it's downloaded it and put it in on the background. Now to be able to actually use this within um, the PowerShell ISE, we need to install it. So we use this second command of install automation ISE add-on. So what I have noticed is sometimes the first time you run this commandlet, if you don't have a PowerShell profile already created within your main documents paths, you will get this error. Now the easiest way to test for this is there is a dollar profile variable within PowerShell and we can actually just test to see whether it exists, which obviously it doesn't, hence me getting this error. What we can do, however, is just basically reuse that profile um, variable and actually just create it automatically for us which means if we now try to run that install Azure ISE add-on, it absolutely goes in straight away. Now if we go into running, not another console, we go into running the actual ISE environment, we should see now up in the right hand corner we get this Azure Automation ISE add-on environment. So from within here, we get the ability to actually set what path we want to use for storing this um, sync set of run books and assets. We get the account that we're going to use to actually connect to our automation environment. So if I sign in. Now because I've signed in previously, it's kept my credentials and it's signed me in automatically. Otherwise you'll get the standard type of Azure asking you whether it's a work account or a Microsoft account to log in. 
we can see the different subscriptions and of course I only have one automation account within mine and it's there with a link to it. Now the interesting bits come in where we have the actual run books tab and if we have a look at that we can see the various PowerShell workflow run books in my environment and I can then actually click to download a copy of that and then I can open that for local editing. And then from within here we get all the benefits and features of the um, PowerShell ISC environment. So we get the usual IntelliSense and we can do whatever modules are actually installed locally. And then we get the ability to actually be able to test it so we can see what it's like, publish it up or do the various different management features around the different assets. Now obviously you may want to test this and then you might decide it's not right or there is various different issues with it so you want to be able to uninstall it. So it's a very similar process to what we're doing with installing. So if we go and do uninstall Azure Automation IC add-on that will remove it from the console. So we should now be able to see this is now removed from the IC environment. should just get the commands now not the Azure Automation tab and again to uninstall the module if we go find the install module again just prefix it with uninstall module and there we go a very simple way to be able to add in local offering for your Azure Automation activities I will say this is still currently in development if you do see any issues, please go to this main site on GitHub, check the issues tab, see whether it's already already been raised, and if not, get that feedback provided so that actually it can help Microsoft increase the actual usage and the functionalities and the stability of this tool and make it really good. Enjoy.